Getting to campus this morning on State College Boulevard was a nightmare. A construction site caused major traffic jams. Coming up, we'll tell you how long we'll have to endure the delays. President Trump just might have to turn over his tax returns. We have breaking news out of New York State. And later, San Diego woman had the most unusual dream. She thought she swallowed her 2.4 carat engagement ring. Well, that was no dream. OC News starts right now. Welcome and thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Gunnar Texera. And I'm Rachel Andrews. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. Getting to Cal State Fullerton via State College Boulevard has been difficult all day. That's because a construction crew is working at State College near Dorothy Lane. It all started yesterday when a water main broke and the campus was without water for mo much of the day. We go live to Tanya Thorne who is on the scene with details. Tanya? A main water break was reported here on North State College Boulevard on Saturday, creating a possible sinkhole and shutting down the water supply to the entire CSUF campus. CSUF PD reported the water break around 10.45 a.m. and water was restored around 1.30 p.m. Crews were expected to open the street by Sunday morning, but as of today, North State College Boulevard is still down to one lane. And now we talk to some students who were impacted by the traffic. I was affected a lot. Um, I usually come down an hour before and I was a little late to class. The Fullerton e um, always sends us an email if something's like going on or anything so they sent us an email that it was happening and actually our water was off so we couldn't even go to the restroom only for like a couple 30 minutes. As of today CSUF PD tweeted State College Boulevard at Dorothy Lane is still down to one lane but indefinitely. Tanya Thorne, OC News, back to you guys in the studio. The Santa Ana College campus has been closed today due to a man with multiple gunshot wounds being found dead in his crash car in the school parking lot. The Santa Ana Police Department received a call around 1 a.m. reporting shots on the 1500 block of the North Bristol Street. When Orange County paramedics arrived, the man was pronounced dead at the scene. It is suspected that while driving, the man had an altercation with people in another vehicle, and that is when gunshots fired off. Detectives are reviewing footage from local businesses and the campus footage to see if the crash or the gunshots occurred first. According to the news release, five suspects have been detained in connection with the case thus far. Reopening of the campus is still unknown. An Orange County High School has been accused of racially taunting visitors at a football game. San Diego activists held a news conference this morning calling for an apology from San Clemente High School, whose fans allegedly yelled racial taunts at a visiting high school. The Capistrano Unified School District is investigating reports that racial slurs like the N-word were targeted at Lincoln High School's football team, cheerleaders, and fans during a football game Friday night. Lincoln High head coach David Doom reported that the school's cheerleaders were told that they should be on leashes. Other reports say that the security staff failed to prevent the racial taunts, even telling visitors to shut up. Lincoln High School traveled to San Clemente High School from San Diego, but many were advised to leave early due to the behavior exhibited by San Clemente fans. San Clemente High School principal Chris Carter said in a statement released this weekend that the school does not condone racist speech, speech or action and is deeply concerned by the allegations. School officials plan to further investigate the issue by reviewing camera footage from the stadium and interviewing those who attended the game. President Trump just might have to turn over his tax records after all. The New York County District Attorney's Office subpoenaed President Donald Trump's accounting firm to receive eight years of his tax returns. Pre President Trump has previously claimed IRS audits have prevented him from releasing his tax returns, although it is known that audits don't prevent individuals from making their tax returns public. The subpoena stemmed from the criminal investigation into the Trump's organization's hush money payments made in the run-up to the 2016 election. Trump's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, admitted to buying the silence of adult film star Stormy Daniels, who allegedly had an affair with the president, which Trump has previously denied. This marks a new leap into the extensive effort into obtaining the president's tax returns due to the administration's efforts in securing Trump's financial information. We'll now go to Katie to tell us some international news that could be affecting us here at home. Gas prices are increasing in the soon, and sooner than me, we may want. 
Drones claimed by the Yemen rebels struck two major oil facilities in Saudi Arabia early Saturday morning, resulting in the loss of nearly 6% of the world's oil supply and more than half of their daily exports. Our president is hopeful and wants all of us not to panic. President Trump originally tweeting, the U.S. is locked and loaded, waiting to potentially retaliate. The president is now not concerned with the oil crisis. From CNN's live update on the story, they announced Trump says the oil crisis would not affect the U.S. due to the country's large amount of oil in our country. Trump says we're independent of everybody now and we have more than anybody else, so it won't affect us. And ultimately, I don't think it will affect the world either, but it won't affect the United States. Long-term effects depend on how quickly Saudi Arabia can restore production. This attack has left a serious impact on, f on the financial market. Oil prices are soaring as quickly as making a barrel of Brent crude going from $60 per barrel earlier this morning to $72. There has not been this much of a jump since the 1980s. Back to you two. Up next, more concerns over vaping and new laws coming your way. And later, there's plenty to celebrate today. That is, if you like guacamole. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. More disturbing health concerns caused by vaping and legislation that is meant to keep teens from starting in the first place. All this and more in our health news segment. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo pushed to ban flavored e-cigarettes across the U.S. saying, quote, Our destiny is in our hands and we are taking action, end quote. He says he does not want to wait for the government to take action as the focus is to keep kids from using e-cigarettes. This week, state health officials are going to have an emergency regulation meeting. This meeting will discuss putting the ban into place. The trend of vaping has caused noticeable health issues among young people. In Chicago, local officials have gathered to campaign against e-cigarette use in order to prevent new cases of lung disease. Illinois has 52 confirmed cases, 12 under investigation, and one death relating to lung disease, possibly caused by vaping. There have been 380 confirmed and possible cases of lung disease tied to vaping across the U.S. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, six deaths have been reported. In a tweet Friday night, President Donald Trump took a different perspective on vaping, early in the week announcing an effort to ban almost all vaping products. Trump tweeted, quote, while I like the vaping alternative to cigarettes, we need to make sure this alternative is safe for all. Let's get counterfeits off the market and keep young children from vaping, end quote. The president saying Wednesday that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration would be putting out, quote, some very strong recommendations, end quote, regarding the use of flavored e-cigarettes in the upcoming weeks. Some heartburn and acid reflux medications may be contaminated with a cancer-causing impurity. The Food and Drug Administration says the drug Zantac and its generics contain a small amount of the substance known as NDMA. It is possible that NDMA is the same carcinogen that prompted a July recall of multiple blood pressure medications. An F FDA spokeswoman told USA Today that the discovery isn't prompting a recall and says people shouldn't panic, but the agency says it is a good idea to switch to another over-the-counter drug. Those who are on a prescription version should consult their doctors. The Federal Food and Drug Administration is evaluating a new drug aimed at treating peanut allergies in children. The drug is called Palforzia and works by exposing kids to pharmaceutical-grade peanut proteins. According to the Washington Post, the treatment could pave the way for a new generation of treatments that could reduce allergies by desensitizing patients. However, the drug will not fully eliminate peanut allergies. Most children who experienced success with the treatment were only able to tolerate two peanuts. However, this could prevent a possible reaction from accidental exposures. Many dream of finding the perfect engagement ring. Few dream of swallowing it. But for one San Diego woman, that's exactly what she did. She swallowed it in her sleep. Rena Nakato spoke with her about her prenuptial nightmare. 
Sounds like a good idea. Jenna Evans can't help but blush when she talks about her fiance, Bobby. We've been together for five and a half years. Quite a long time to get the ring of her dreams from the man of her dreams. I designed it and oh, I picked did? all the stones and everything. But Tuesday night, this three stone band of love ended up in a dark place. I was having a dream that we were on a cargo train and it was a dangerous situation and Bobby told me you know, you have to swallow your ring. Her 007 dream world became a real life emergency. When I woke up and it was not on my hand, I knew exactly where it was. Where was it? It was in my stomach. The couple felt panic, hilarity, then a little bit of both. At 8 a.m., they rushed into urgent care and explained her bizarre situation. And I wish I could have seen their faces. The x-ray confirmed her story. It's very clear, there's no looking for it. It's just right there. Her gastroenterologist suggested an emergency endoscopy. I was really happy because I don't know if I'd ever be able to look at it and appreciate it in the same way if I had had to search for it. Meaning let nature take its course? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she went under and a few minutes later, Evans was reunited with her engagement ring. I feel very grateful that I got it back and that, that it is it, it does end as a happy, funny story. A crazy adventure that gives new meaning to a sparkling bride inside and out, and a reminder to be a bit more careful when going to bed. I have been taking it off at night. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. In San Diego, Rena Nakano, 10 News. A major shakeup in the lineup for Dancing with the Stars, top box office numbers, and the music industry mourns the death of an 80s music icon. Our entertainment reporter Paige Farley is here with the details. Rico Kasich, leading singer of The Cars, the American rock band of the late 1970s, died Sunday in his New York townhouse at age 75. NYPD found Okasik unconscious in his townhouse where he was pronounced dead at the scene. An autopsy report indicates he died from his heart disease. The band became popular during the new wave scene in the late 1970s and 80s with major hits such as Drive and My Best Friend's Girl. After a long hiatus in the 1980s, the group reunited in 2011 for their last studio album. Over the span of the 30-year break, Okasik became a songwriter and producer, producing other bands including Weezer. Last year, Okasik and the Cars were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. While dominating the box office last weekend, the horror sequel It Chapter 2 came across an unlikely competitor for the title this time around. In Hollywood, CNN reporter's David Daniel has the details for the weekend top five. The Lion King made the top five for a ninth straight weekend. $3.6 million gave the remake a domestic total of $534 million. $4.3 million put the preteen comedy Good Boys in fourth place. Angel Has Fallen crossed $60 million in domestic ticket sales with a third place weekend worth $4.4 million. Hey, these are my sisters. Hustlers took the experts by surprise. The drama, inspired by a true story, debuted in second place with a better than expected $33.2 million. This club has officially begun. It Chapter 2 held on to the top spot, scaring up $40.7 million for a 10-day domestic total of $154 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. New moves are being made in the current season of Dancing with the Stars. After a trip up on the dance floor, Christy Brinkley is benched from Dancing with the Stars due to a broken arm. Her daughter is now taking her place for the chance to win the Mirror Ball Trophy. On Monday, the 65-year-old supermodel surprisingly made light out of the situation in the announcement of her injury. Now in the spotlight is Sailor Brinkley Cook. In fact, the 21-year-old is already rehearsing. Adding some controversy uh, to the topic, talk show host Wendy Williams accuses Brinkley of faking her injury. Williams states she signed up for the show knowing her daughter would take her place. Brinkley denies the allegations made against her. Dancing with the Stars premieres Monday at 8 p.m. on ABC. And that's all for entertainment today. Back to you guys. Coming up, Cal State Fullerton continues to win on the soccer field. And add it to your tacos, gobble up with chips, or just enjoy it on its own. Guess which fruit is celebrating its special day today? OC News will be right back. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. 
My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. It was a fantastic weekend for sports fans. This Sunday was jam-packed full of exciting games. Alex Armstrong is here with all of the sports news. Yeah, I sure was busy this weekend, sitting on the couch watching sports. We start our local news out with, the ver with our very own Cal State Fullerton men's soccer team, taking on the number 14 ranked Florida Gulf Coast University. The Titans took advantage of this penalty and red card from defender Ernest Mitchell, which Christian Pinzon calmly scored. Later in the 70th minute, Mario Gomez doubled the Titans' lead with this goal, squeaking this one by the goalkeeper. Titans would get the clean sheet, winning comfortably 2-0. Switching over to the MLB now, things are heating up with the playoffs looming in the coming weeks. One of those teams vying for a playoff spot is the Tampa Bay Rays, who took on the Angels in Anaheim on Sunday morning. 39-year-old Albert Pujols showed age is just a number, hitting this RBI double early, and then hitting this three-run hom homer later in the game to give the Angels a big lead. The Rays tried to rally with this triple homer in the eighth, but the Angels would hold on to win 6-4. Over on the East Coast, the Dodgers traveled away to New York to play the Mets. They went down early from this Brandon Nimmo triple, but in typical Dodger fashion, they rally back late. Chris Taylor ties it in the eighth with this RBI double before Jed Jerko wins it in the ninth with this go-ahead single. Dodgers win 3-2. Switching over to the NFL now, the Rams were in action at home in a rematch of last year's infamous NFC Championship game. This game would be no different with the referee decisions and injuries headlining this one. Drew Brees went down early from this Aaron Donald slap to the hand, hurting his thumb. And Rams score here to make it 20-9. The Saints just couldn't manage to score a touchdown without Drew Brees. And the Rams would take this one 27-9. Switching over to the other L.A. team, the L.A. Chargers. They are away to Detroit this Sunday. The Chargers took the lead early with this leaping effort from Austin Eckler. But Matthew Stafford and the Lions answered back with this bobbling catch for a touchdown. The Lions got the upset win with this 31-yard touchdown pass to Kennedy, Kenny Galladay late in the fourth. Lions win 13-10. Today is the day to celebrate all things guacamole. It's National Guacamole Day and also the start of the National Hispanic Heritage Month. The avocado was originally grown in Mexico and Central America in 1833 and made its way up to Florida three years later. You can celebrate with the rest of the nation by making your own homemade guac or visiting any Mexican restaurant on or off campus. Take a picture of your very own guac dish and post it on social media with the hashtag National Guacamole Day. For me, my favorite places to eat chips and guac is Chipotle and Pepe's. Here, hope to see you guys there. That's all for OC News. Thank you for joining us. For more updates on everything OC, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at OC News CSUF. I'm Rachel Andrews. And I'm Gunnar Texera. See you next time.